Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates. I am covering the Moscow, Idaho case. Let's talk about Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk, two of the surviving roommates that were inside the home where four college students got brutally stabbed during the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022. They survived. The other ones, unfortunately, did not that were in that home. Now, a lot of people are wondering online, why isn't Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk in the witness protection plan or the witness protection um, services? Because some states actually offer that. The federal government offers that to witnesses who are going to testify against individuals because you would think that their life, you know, is <laughs> matters and, you know, there could be some retaliation on them. Unfortunately, Idaho does not offer the witness protection plan in the state. However, they do offer victims assistance in Idaho. And I'm going to show you a the Moscow, uh, the city of Moscow website about victim assistance for people that are victims of a crime. Bethany and Dylan are definitely victims in a crime. Check this out. So according to the city of Moscow, Idaho, their website, they do offer victim assistance. As a victim, you have the right to have your property returned by law enforcement agencies as soon as, soon as it is no longer needed as evidence, to be notified of the date and time of all court proceedings in this case, and to be pr present at those proceedings, to communicate with the prosecutor and be advised of possible plea agreement by the prosecuting attorney prior to entering in a plea agreement, to refuse an interview or other contact by the defendant or by any person acting on behalf of the defendant unless the court orders otherwise, to express your feelings to the judge about the effect the crime has on your life, either in pre-sentence report given to the judge or directly to the judge under oath at the time of sentencing, to read the pre-sentence report prior to sentencing, to be informed of the outcome of the case, including appeal, to be notified by the commission for pardons and parole of relevant parole or commutation hearings and have the opportunity to address the commission either in person or in writing to be notified whenever the defendant is released or escapes from custody. So they do offer victim assistance in Laytal County of victims of crimes, according to the city of Moscow, Idaho's webpage. So they can't join the witness protection plan but they do get victim assistance. Also, there's another option, name change. I'm just wondering if Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk are considering changing their name. There is a process, but you can do that in the state of Idaho. You can change your name legally. Check it out. So according to wikihow.life, this is how you would change your name in Idaho. Whether you've recently married or divorced or tired of people misspelling your name or just feel like you, you've gone as far as you can in life as John Smith, you may be interested in changing your name. In the state of Idaho, you have several options to complete this process. After legally changing your name, however, you also have to remember to update your various forms of identification, financial and insurance accounts, and so on. Know the benefits and requirements of legal name change. It may seem like too much trouble to go through all the paperwork, fees, and court appearance in order to change your name, but it is worthwhile to make the change you prefer official. Idaho, like many other states, permits you to change your name simply by constantly using that name, but that type of change wouldn't likely be accepted by the Social Security Administration, your financial institutions, or even the State Department of Motor Vehicles for your driver's license. Official certified documentations of a name change is the way to go. In order to use the standard process to petition for name change as an adult in Idaho, you must be 18 years old. You must reside in the state, not be a registered SO, not be attempting to avoid creditors or debts. Procure the necessary forms. This is a government process, so expect some paperwork, fees, and waiting time in order to make your name change official. The four forms you need, which are available online, 
from your county courthouse. Uh, petition for name change NCA 1 1. This is, in essence, your application form in which you provide information about yourself, your reasons for desiring a name change, and the new name change you wish to have. The form must be signed and stamped by a license, state licensed notary public who witnessed your signature. Notaries can be found at bank branches, car dealerships, standalone offices, and various other businesses. Then you have to do a notice of hearing, NCA 1-2 form. This form uh, provides information on your hearing date, case number, and location. Uh, most of it will be filled in by the county clerk. Name change letter for publication, NC 1-3. This form, along with the notice of hearing, provides information to be published by your request and at your expense in a local newspaper that circulates within the county of residence. This may seem quaint, but advertising the proposed change in the newspaper is required by law. Order for name change, NCA 8-1. This is the document the judge will sign in which orders your name change to be legally changed. If approved, this form will be your key to changing your name at the SSI, DMV, and so on. Fill the paperwork at your county courthouse. Fill out each of the forms as indicated. Make one additional copy of your petition and two additional copies of your notice to file with the originals. The clerk will give you a hearing date. You'll be required at the time to pay a filing fee, currently $166. You may also apply for a fee of waiver at this time, however, if you have a financial hardship. Publish inside the no local newspaper. Contact the newspaper in your county or in your county's lack of or a lax one, a paper nearby. The county clerk should have information on available papers, provide the paperwork, sign, completed, copy of the letter for publication, and notice of hearing. The notice must appear in the newspaper once a week for four consecutive weeks prior to your hearing date. The publication fees are your responsibility. Once you notice, once your notice has run four times, make sure the newspaper provides you with an affidavit of publication or sends it directly to the clerk. If it is given to you, file it with the clerk before your court date. Attend your court hearing. Arrive early. Arrive early just in case. Confirm your room number and wait for your name in case to be called. Make sure you bring the following with you. The order for name change plus the affidavit of publication if you have not already filed it with the clerk. A photo ID with your current name. Any additional documents related to your request such as evidence regarding your current status on a SO registry if relevant. You may be questioned under oath by the judge, so answer, answer truthfully. The judge will sign your request whether it is granted or denied. If it is granted, you can request additional copies of the order from the clerk for a small fee. Obtain at least two copies now because you will use them to change your social security card and driver's license. So it tells you a little bit about the process, right? And I strongly re recommend go to this page if you want to change your name, will Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk change their name to avoid the circus about to surround them and is probably still surrounding them in reference to the Brian Kohlberger case? Idaho 4. So that gives you the steps on changing your name. What do you think? Do you think Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk will change their names? Do you think they will... I think they're in hiding right now, personally, because of just the publicity about this case, the unknowns about this case. But how long do you think this will go on the rest of their lives? Do you think they'll have to change their name? Do you think they'll have to move? What's your thoughts about Dylan um, and Bethany? Because it's most likely they're going to testify and they're going to be under the microscope. And, you know, they're going to be analyzed, particularly Dylan, because we've read the affidavit of probable cause. And a lot of people are suspect about Dylan's behavior that night. Not saying Dylan is a suspect in the case, just suspect about her behaviors. Though some people might think she's involved. I don't personally, but others might. So let me know what you think about, about all this. Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. I am covering the Brian Kohlberger case, the Idaho 4. We'll talk soon. Justice for the victims and their families. Everyone be safe. Isn't that right, OJ? OJ's asleep. My little kitty cat. Bye-bye.